guys, my name is Sabina and welcome to another video. Today I'm gonna talk to you guys about my favorite TV shows ever. And by saying ever, it does not really really mean ever, but I feel like I have caught up with all these series or like I finished them and I can tell you that these are like definitely my favorite TV shows ever. I did this video back in like December of 2015, but since then I've watched like a lot a lot of TV shows so a ton of them have been like removed and I've seen so many new TV shows that have taken over their places but I definitely have a top three but then I also have like four shows that I just want to talk to you guys about because those are really like oh my god amazing TV shows too. Let's start off with the first series that I want to talk about and that is Rick and Morty and this is a little different from the rest of the shows that are on my list because Rick and Morty is an animated TV show with like a ton of adult jokes in it. Don't watch this if you cannot handle weird gross jokes because this show is just it's just that. It's like this um, sci-fi show about a grandpa and a grandson who travel between different dimensions and <laughs> it's just really funny. It always makes me laugh. I've been watching season three with my dad right now and the jokes are just so like gross and funny at the same time and he laughs about them and then I laugh about them and the show itself is just really awesome and twisted. Next up I have a TV show that is just like so famous. Like everyone knows this. It's been ended for like four years right now, I believe. It has gotten a 9.5 on IMDb, which is International Movie Database, and that is Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad was the first TV show that I watched once I got my Netflix subscription because, I mean, I just had to watch it. It's just such a legendary show about a science teacher who discovers that he has lung cancer and his family and him, they are just really poor and he has to work multiple jobs so it isn't working out and because he is a science teacher, he knows how he can make the purest crystal meth and he decides to sort of like join the cartels and he's gonna be Heisenberg and this show again is so like, wow, it's so emotionally like, Ugh, packed. It's such a heavy subject in a series and it's epic at the same time. It's really dramatic and sometimes in Breaking Bad the episodes aren't as action-packed as in others. I remember this one episode which I really didn't like but there was like a more deeper meaning to it and um that one is really really famous because actually nothing happened in that episode but there was like such a deeper meaning to it that some people really liked it and I just thought that it was quite boring but maybe if I rewatch the show and now that I'm older I might appreciate that one a little bit more. This series is mind-blowing and if you haven't watched it which I would be like so shocked about please do so it's just the most well-known show ever. Next up I have a comedy show which is How I Met Your Mother and Oh, again, this one is just so famous. It was on TV, I think, from 2004 until 2014, but I'm not too sure about that. Uh, a lot of people might know that the ending was crap. Just watch the alternate ending as well and just see that as the initial ending and you'll be fine. This show is basically about Ted who's telling his children how he met their mother. That's all. The title explains itself and you follow Tad and his friend group and the funny things that they do and again, it's just a really, really funny show. Next up, one of my other favorites, which I watched last year before I had my very first school exams. I was just, I binged watched it in like, I don't know, a weekend maybe. Freaks and Geeks. And this show is really old and by really old, it's just as old as I am because it was released in 1999. Freaks and Geeks is definitely not that popular, but I just randomly stumbled upon it on Netflix and decided to start watching it because there are a ton of super well-known uh, actors in the show like Seth Rogen, James Franco, Jason Siegel, who also plays in How I Met Your Mother and I am in love with Jason Siegel in Freaks and Geeks. Like he is just ah, my crush, my man. And there's only like one season of Freaks and Geeks because it was like aired on TV back in the day when there was like Friends and that 70s show and stuff like that. So it wasn't as popular back then, but when it came back on Netflix a ton of people like it just blew up again and it was such a shame because there were plans for a season two but because it wasn't as successful back in the day as it is right now they didn't film another season which really really sucks because I was so obsessed with Freaks and Geeks, Jason Siegel as Nick and just their group, their friendship group and the things that they went through. It's just like a high school TV show with drama and it's just 
I don't know, I really, really liked it. Usually I really don't watch those TV shows, but Freaks and Geeks is the exception and it is just a really, really good show. Right now my top three and these are just, wow, these are the ones that you really need to watch or at least that I think you need to watch because mm, it will just really uplift your life. Number three for me is Stranger Things and I even made a whole separate video on reasons why you need to watch Stranger Things when it was recently released last year. I was just again so obsessed. I watched season one within 24 hours then I rewatched it with my dad in like two weeks or something because I was just so incredibly obsessed and I'm definitely gonna try and rewatch it before season two comes out. I'm really nervous about season two because I just want it to be just as good as season one and season one was just such a huge success. It's about this uh, friend group and the story takes place in the 80s so you have all those really awesome culture references which I sometimes don't get. Sometimes I do. I just really like seeing things take place in the 80s. And this friend group loses one of their friends and they're trying to find him. They meet a girl called Eleven and it's all a little bit like more paranormal-ish and weird things start happening. It's not like horror but then again, it is. I really dislike like true horror movies, but I love Stranger Things. So if you feel kind of the same way or if you're like nervous to start watching it, please just do so. It's just uh, the story itself and the culture references and the actors, they are all so amazing, which makes Stranger Things one of the best TV shows that I've ever watched. And now let's hope that season two is just as good as season one. My number two is Sherlock and just like with Stranger Things, I have watched all the episodes of Sherlock twice until so far. So last year I started watching season one to three and I watched season four when it came out and then in the past month I watched season one through four with my dad again and I've just refound my obsession with Sherlock. So it is like a modern day retelling of Sherlock and his co-worker, like his partner in crime, Watson solving crimes. It's not like your traditional thriller murder mystery shows because you cannot watch the episodes just at a random order. You have to follow them in chronological order because there is a bigger storyline throughout it as well, which is so interesting and well thought out. And Sherlock is just such an interesting character and Benedict Cumberbatch or Benedict Q. Cumberbatch. Oh, is such a great actor, just as Martin Freeman, who plays Watson. Their, like, relationship connection together and the just, oh, uh, Sherlock is just such a weird and amazing human being. And then you also have the English humor, which just in total makes this show one of the absolute best things on earth. And then my number one favorite TV show of this moment is gonna be on almost everyone else's list too, and that is Game of Thrones. I know guys, you cannot escape the Game of Thrones hype. I was definitely one of those people right up until this year who lived under a rock and who had never seen Game of Thrones before, and I was just always wondering what it was like, why it is so hyped, and then in January I started watching it because I finally could. <laughs> I finished season one through six in four weeks. I know, that's crazy. I've also caught up with season seven. I watched every single episode every single week and I am so sad that there's only one season left, but I get to rewatch season one through six again with my best friend and I'm just gonna rewatch the episodes. I really am a big fan of fantasy and with Game of Thrones, it definitely takes you like one or two seasons to fully get invested in the story or at least it was for me because the names are so weird and complex, just like the world that you definitely need to get used to it and just binge watch it. That is the best solution. So if I totally have to recommend only three shows to people here, I definitely always say Stranger Things, Sherlock, and Game of Thrones. Please just go watch it. Those were the seven shows that I wanted to talk to you guys about. Let me know in the comments down below which are your favorite TV shows. I love to talk about Netflix and HBO and TV shows like that. Oh, and by the way, right now that I'm talking about HBO, I left one show out of this list, which I am Okay, it is Westworld. Just, your mind is gonna be blown if you watch it. If you want a series like that, watch that. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos. You can also follow me on all of my different social media pages like Goodreads, Bookstagram, Instagram, my Snapchat, and I also have an email address, so links to those will also be in the description down below. And you can check it out if you want to. Again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!